Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Thank you guys for joining us and being with us today for our midweek service. Um, we have been going through Pastor Walter's manual on the Spirit Life, Volume 3. Um, and uh, actually, he's uh, doing a little bit of revisions as we're going through this. So um, next week, we'll get into some of the newer stuff he just added. So if you have the manual next week, we're going to cover some stuff that you might not have. So you don't want to miss it because we can um, experience that because it's really good revelation and knowledge. And that's actually what we are the subject we are currently on is on revelation knowledge and um, the, the, that, that, that insight that we need in order to have the spirit life that God has designed for us. So um, let's start with prayer and then we'll get into uh, where we left off last week. Do you want to pray? Sure. God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to dive in, to study and glean from the truths that you've revealed to us. We thank you that as we study, that you bring illumination, revelation, insight, and we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're just going to pick up right where we left off last week, um, starting with the scripture we left off with last week. Um, so we're starting in Proverbs 29, verse 18. It says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And then to reference the Amplified Classic, it says, Where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God. The people perish, and but he who keeps the law of God, which includes that of man, blessed, happy, fortunate, enviable is he. So where there is no vision, the concept of that here is that God's people can't see because they're living in darkness. This is in reference to a people living without the divine revelation of the word of God. And that's why they're in darkness, because they don't have the light of the revelation of the word, so they have no vision mm -hmm. because they're in darkness. So the word happy means um, enjoying the outcome of favorable circumstances in a state of bliss. Also remember that divine revelation comes with various degrees. It can be weaker or stronger, prompting us to do the word, and the revelation that we receive comes with knowledge, comprehension, and understanding. The lack of application of the illuminated word is also implied where it says, but he that keepeth the law happy is he. So there's that implication of applying the law there. Uh, so there are at least three categories um, that are worth mentioning here. Um, that's The first is there's a lack, which is not having received the word of God, which is highly unlikely for the children of Israel, but maybe somewhat probable. Then there are those who have received the illumination of the word, in their hearts, but for whatever reason failed to apply the word to their lives. And the last category is those who have received a certain degree of illumination, which is revelation knowledge, but more than likely reject it because of pride. So there are three different types of people being referenced here. But the word vision means an oracle or prophecy, divine communication. This word holds the idea of being excited about divine communication. It captures the idea of the revelation of the word of God. It comes from a word that means a dream, divine revelation, or an oracle vision. So the revelation of an oracle vision can come through a prophetic dream or through the illumination of one's spirit. Both concepts bring illumination to the spirit or heart of man. Isn't that interesting? So another word that is important in this passage of scripture is the word perish. It is a Hebrew word that means to loosen or to have no direction, which carries the idea of having or showing a lack of restraint. This is a very interesting verse because it reveals that without the Word of God, people have no divine revelation or direction. Here the Word is credited with giving people vision. That simply means allowing them to see through the revelation of the Word of God, giving them divine direction. Now this is interesting. We've known people like this. The problem is that people confuse a fleshly intellect and emotions because of a lack of experience with what God reveals to their inward man by way of revelation knowledge. So the word loses <clears throat> its importance. Uh, they become restless and veer off the plan of God for their lives. So in other words, they're making what their emotions are telling them, and they're confusing that as God communicating to them mm -hmm. and God telling them. So maybe you know they started off uh, doing something for God, and they were passionate and excited about it. 
and then all of a sudden it gets a little hard or maybe things don't go exactly how they want it to go. And so they're like, well, you know, um, God's not telling me. God's telling me to go do something else now. Mm -hmm. But they never even finished the first thing that God told them to do. Yeah. So they get off. They lose um, that that the direction of mm -hmm. where they should where they should be. They get confused. Yeah. And the count the the concept too of vision is that there's a counting. There you're counting the cost. Mm -hmm. And like when vision comes, you know it's it's going to take it's going to take uh, some fortitude to to carry that out. Mm -hmm. um, if the Apostle Paul quit every time he was stoned and left for dead, we wouldn't have a New Testament, right? Mm -hmm. If he quit every time he was shipwrecked. And that's, I think, a lot of New Testament Christians today, they feel like if there's resistance that they must not be mm -hmm. in the plan of God. But Jesus said, in the world, you'll have trouble. And so what we need to do is understand what is God instructing each of us to do. Right, and not confuse um, how your emotions are, are affected by, you know, circumstances or, or things that you're going through. Yeah. And, and not confuse what your emotions are experiencing by God communicating, with God communicating with you. Right. Because that's not how God communicates with you. He won't right. communicate with you through your emotions ever. Right. That's not, the, that's not the same thing as being led by the Spirit of God. That's right. It's being led by your emotions, when Jesus, which is from your flesh. When Jesus, when Jesus was led by the Spirit of God into into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days. That didn't feel good on mm -hmm. his flesh. Like, if you don't eat for 40 days, your flesh is going to be mad. People that don't eat for 40 minutes, and their flesh is mad, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, to Pastor's point, you have to allow the Word and the Holy Spirit to lead and direct you. Mm -hmm. We're not led and directed by our emotions, by our feelings, or what feels good in the moment. That's the flesh. That's carnality. Right. You know, uh, for both Dave and I, we we know without a doubt that God has called us to RCF and that God has called us to help Pastor Walter. And so there is nothing that can talk us out of that that divine revelation of where we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so there, there, you know, it hasn't always been roses or peaches and cream or however, whatever expression you want to say that would say that it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for us, uh, it, it, it's come with sacrifice and it's come mm -hmm. with commitment and drive. And, and so we, we've had to, when our feelings and emotions aren't connected, we've had to, we've had to push past that right. and dig deep and do what we know we need to do despite our emotions. And, and that's just because, you know, the enemy is going to try to do whatever he can to get mm -hmm. you away from the plan of God for your life. Um, so this is a big problem in the body of Christ. People can't achieve what God gave them to do because in their mind, God is fickle and keeps changing his mind, which we know that he doesn't change his mm -hmm. mind. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's going he's to tell you something, and he's going to see you through to the end. Yeah. So he's not going to change what he's told you well, to do. Well, time doesn't change the call. Mm -hmm. Time proves out the call. Like time, people look at a clock on the wall, and they're like, this isn't coming fast enough. And then they give up and quit. Mm -hmm. But God, God doesn't move based on the clock on the wall, right? Sophie, Sophie, you you need to be patient. I'm you need to let I'm <laughs> patience have her perfect work. Just stay up under the pressure, so I'll go let her out real quick because she's gonna whine at us. Sophie's a typical New Testament Christian that struggles with her flesh. Debbie's back. Okay. So, uh, what people can't seem to understand is that the Lord is so long suffering with his people that he keeps them in a certain area until they master or develop the skills he placed them in there to begin with. So, uh, you know, it's funny as I was reading through this, I was kind of pondering what we've personally experienced in following the call of God in our lives. And, and truly, uh, I, I can very clearly see the reason that we were called to help Pastor Walter, and that is because the things that we need, that we needed personally for our own development, came because of what he put into us, what he mm -hmm. deposited into us, the work that he uh, uh, committed to in helping us develop. And, yeah. and I don't, we couldn't have gotten that anywhere else. Right. The 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 type of development and skill that Pastor Walter has invested into us mm -hmm. is invaluable. We couldn't have gotten that 
from anywhere else. Right. And the things that I personally had to to overcome emotionally uh, to be able to just do the work. Mm -hmm. He was patient and kind and helped me learn how to process yeah. things emotionally. Um, and, and, and I'm just so grateful that God knows what he's doing and yeah. that, that he put us where we're at and he's helped us and developed us because we've stayed committed to the call yeah. and plan of God for our lives. The, uh, the, the true test of faithfulness is time. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to be counted faithful, you have to be able to put yourself in a situation where God and instructed you and then you just stay. Mm -hmm. You stay the course when everybody else quits. How many people have quit? How many people have left? How many people have gave up? You just stay the course. Right. And there's times where we get up for praise. I remember back at the old church, we'd get up for praise and worship, and there'd be more people on the platform than there were out in the... Sometimes no one would be in the audience. <laughs> and I'm like, what are we doing? But what did we do? We just stayed the course, right. stayed the course, stayed the course. And you can't look at the circumstances and and let that determine what did God call you to do? What's the vision? What's the purpose? What has God called you to do? What's God's plan for your life? Because it's greater, it's bigger, it's it's uh it the the end of it is way better than the little tests that you go right. through. And uh, again, speaking from experience, when Pastor Walter asks you to do something as insignificant as it may seem to you, to your flesh, there is a reason. He is asking you to do what yeah. what he's asking you to do, and it's in in in. I'm going to say nine point five times out of ten, mm -hmm. it's for your personal development, so so that so that you can succeed yeah. in the plan of God for your life, and to help you do what God's asked you to do. Yeah, you know, the, it's the little things that we're called to mm -hmm. that prove out our heart and our character, mm -hmm. and and um, even something as as insignificant as like the toilet bowl ministry. And like, I remember we used to do that Saturday night at the after youth group, we'd go eat and then we'd come back. So it'd be like 11 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. 1130 at night. And this was by choice, mm -hmm. but we would put on music and we would, you know, I remember Uncle Blue would be there and Eddie would be there and uh, Josh would be there. And like, we would be there just serving mm -hmm. like together and, and just scrubbing toilets and mopping floors. And as insignificant as that seemed. If you can't take care of the things of God when no one's watching, mm -hmm. right, then you don't qualify to go to that next level. And in some of the stuff, too, that like we've uh, taken care of, like some of the older vehicles that we had where they were older and they needed taken care of, they needed replaced. But we were not at a place where we could do that. And so we were just waiting on God, waiting on God. But in, in, the, in the time that we were doing that, we took care of. We'd go wash that thing and detail that thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember my little Tercel, the thing was a piece of junk, but mm -hmm. I still, I would take care of that. I would, I mean, the, the one thing time I backed have, into it and it just, Debbie tried to run it over. <laughs> it just kind of bumped back. It had no heater. Um, it barely had windshield wipe. I mean, the thing was just not, not living above the revelation line, but it's where we were. Right. And the point is where you're at, God has put things in your life. Take care of those things because mm -hmm. if you prove yourself faithful with little, then you can be trusted with a little more and you prove yourself with a little more. So people are like, well, how do I get to much? Well, you prove yourself faithful with little because those who are faithful with little, that's the character and they can be trusted with more. And then you get into more and then eventually more turns into much. Right. And so those that you see who are faithful and being entrusted with much, who are being trusted with multi-millions of dollars and, mm -hmm. and jets and huge buildings and huge ministries. They were faithful with the little. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. So, you know, we took a little rabbit trail there, but getting back to the concept of revelation knowledge and, and receiving the Word of God. So um, uh, I'll read this last statement we just read again to recap. What people can't seem to understand is that the Lord is so long-suffering with his people that he keeps them in a certain area until they master or develop the skills he placed them in there to begin with. It is the same with the word. You will keep hearing and hearing the same message until you get it deep into your heart to the point that you're living in it. That's where this revelation knowledge comes from, that word of God 
that's so deeply ingrained in your heart that you live it out. So mm -hmm. Proverbs 29, 18, what we started with is even more proof of the need to seek and obtain revelation knowledge, which is our heart being flooded with information, which is discernment, understanding, and knowledge through the intake of the Word of God and the assistance of the Holy Ghost. It is the Word of God that triggers the supernatural divine communication called revelation knowledge by the work and ministry of the Holy Ghost. We can't put enough emphasis on the importance of the Word of God and its wide range of communication that penetrates the heart of the believer. So don't tire of hearing the Word of any given area because you don't ever know what's coming. And I've, I've heard people, I've heard people, you know, after a series has been taught for a while, I've heard mumblings and complainings, ah, oh, this again, you know, um, or even that thought might be a temptation of like, again, again, don't, don't let that attitude mm -hmm. seep in and rob from you what the spirit of God is trying to teach you through the word, right. because that attitude will hurt you and yeah. it will harm you in the long run. So there may come a time when you're tired of hearing the same type of message. This turns off the entrance of the word that brings revelation knowledge. You may even think that you have been hearing already, but then time passes and it doesn't take that much time. And all of a sudden, here comes an attack on your finances, family, or even your health. Mm -hmm. It is then that you need your heart faith that needs to be renewed on a continual basis. Yeah. So that 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 word of that word, that message that 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 you're hearing over and over again and your flesh is like, why this again? That's when you're you really need to dig deep and pay attention to what the Spirit of God is saying to you because you're gonna need that. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna need to be prepared for what's coming in your life. Mm -hmm. There was a coach in the NFL and every year he would start with the same he would hold up a football in front of the team, and these are NFL players, these are professionals, these are highly paid, highly skilled, highly trained, highly equipped, and he would hold up and he'd say, this is a football. And they're like, we know that. But when you think about the attacks of the devil, when you think about what was he doing? He was taking him back as a coach. He was taking him back to the basics of tackling, blocking. I like sports, so I like using this analogy. I see I lost you. But to those of us who like sports, the analogy of, you know, this is running, tackling. These are the basics. The devil is not going to hit you with anything new. He can only steal, kill, and destroy. And so we know the areas that he's going to hit us in. He's going to hit us in our finances, in our relationship, and in, in our health. And so being able to stay in the Word of God and continue to, to digest and, and, and chew on and meditate on and, and gain these, these deep revelations, these deep insights into the, into the Word of God, it's not, it's not just, you know, going through like this is, um, what's the word, where you go over and... Monotonous? Right. Maybe. Sounds good. But it's not just, it's just not the, the religiousness of going through something of a traditional, you know, this is, we've got to be rooted and grounded and established and have the revelation. So when these moments of impact come... We're ready. We're prepared. Mm -hmm. We're shored up. We're ready to go. Like a good soldier of Christ, trained up, ready to go, ready to battle, ready to fight. Because the devil is going about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Mm -hmm. So it is not just what you know. It is what you believe in your heart that will bring you to a place of overcoming any situation that challenges your well-being. How do you know if this is you? It's simple. Do you fall into despair, despair, worry, fear, doubt? Is that your first instinct when something, when an attack comes? Are you all of a sudden anxious? Are you a little bit afraid, a little right. bit worried? Do you let those those thoughts and feelings penetrate? Mm -hmm. Do your thoughts and confession favor the circumstances and not what God's word declares? What are you saying? Right. How are you talking? Uh, you know, there was there was a time I was talking to someone and. They were, they were in so much fear about a circumstance. And I said, I can tell you're not in faith mm -hmm. by what you're saying. Yeah. Well, how Let's many times does the pastor say, to faith. What, what scripture are you standing on? Right. And, 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 and That's not just to be like, why don't you? That's not to, that's not to discourage. Mm -hmm. It's to, it's to 
establish where are you in your faith walk? Right. Where are you in, like, what scripture are you standing on? Because from that place, then we can move forward. But right. if there's no faith, then it's like Jesus talking to the disciples on the boat where he's like, why are you so fearful? And they're like, well, there's a storm. There's going to be storms. The, uh, the, the faith that Jesus walked in allowed him to sleep through the storm. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be storms. So try yourself, test yourself, figure out what you're responding in, and then be honest with yourself. You can't say, I am in complete faith and be motivated or overwhelmed by fear and doubt. Uh, you will tell on yourself yeah. by how you respond to a situation. You will tell other people and, and, and the devil yeah. if you're in faith or if you're in fear by how you respond. So it may be that you need to get back into the word concerning the subject that you're struggling with, that you thought you knew so well, or perhaps irritated your flesh and make a correction and line yourself up for receiving a fresh revelation. Get back. Yeah. Get back. Go back. Pick up your faith. Yeah. Don't don't leave it there. Go mm -hmm. back and grab it and, and move forward. So the mistake that people make when it comes to the comp consumption of the word of God is that they become spiritually malnourished because they have lost interest in the word and have given themselves over to bodily feelings and other responsibilities, setting the word of God aside. The word of God loses its priority mm -hmm. because people are putting their bodily instincts first. For example, physical rest and relaxation, as well as other responsibilities that are deemed to be more important or more valuable than the Word of God at the time. Mm -hmm. This happens because there's too much on their plate and they haven't made room yeah. for the Word. Yeah, I'll give an example of this. Um, so a couple weeks back, I was, I was, uh, I was out and we had, I had to go. I was busy chasing money. Mm -hmm. And I was literally, I literally was saying that. I'm like, I've got to go chase down this money. And so what, what I was doing was going from project to project to project, collecting checks from these draw payments that we were owed, that we were due. But my confession was wrong, and the Holy Ghost checked me on that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you're not supposed to be out chasing money, right? Money is supposed to be chasing you. Money is running you down. Money. What does Deuteronomy say? It says the blessing of the Lord it, it, it maketh rich. Well, that's Proverbs 10, 22. The, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich <laughs> and addeth no sorrow with it. Neither does toiling increase it. So I'm like, well, why am I out here toiling, chasing money? That favor, favor is out in front of me, around me. Money is supposed to be chasing me down, not me out chasing it down. And so what that, what, what meditating upon the word and allowing the revelation of the word to come in, it's going to hit the circumstances of your life, the very real and near and dear circumstances of what you're going through in the word of God, the revelation that you have because you've been in the word, because you've been studying the word, the, the revelation that comes is, wait a second, you're seeing this wrong. You're thinking wrong. You're processing this wrong. Let's change this. And instead of saying this, the Holy Ghost will help you and he'll say, change from what you're saying. Don't say this, say this. And it helps you stay in line with what the Word of God says so that the promises of God can come to pass in your life. Right. So if you have found that you have too much on your plate, it is best to take things off your plate to make room for the Word. So never put the Word as last priority. Prioritize the Word of God over yeah. everything. So it is definitely more profitable for you, for a person, to view the Word as an important or valuable contribution to their lives. Because people don't put a priority on the word, they are not prepared to handle life as it unfolds, as well as those things that arise in the future that go against the promises of God for their lives. They are always struggling and responding to life's situations with or by fear, anxiety, or opinions that project what the natural world is saying and not what God is declaring. Like Dave's example, the world is saying, you have to go do this. You have to go chase this down in order to, to achieve your goals. What God is declaring is different than what the world is declaring. Mm -hmm. So never put, allow those feelings to, to overcome yeah. you. The devil is hard at work blinding the minds of those who are not in the state of believing. It is at those times that we have to be careful to lean more towards what the Bible says, not to what our minds are thinking. This is why. This is why it is so important to put, to, to keep the word of God in you 
to not get tired of hearing the word of God, to to not give the devil entrance mm -hmm. in you by allowing fear, anxiety, worry, tiredness, weariness. Uh, don't give the devil entrance into your life. Uh, uh, stay in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Let the revelation of the word of God illuminate you and guide you and lead you. Uh, it is at those times that we have to be careful to lean more towards what the Bible is saying and not towards what our minds are thinking. Remember, where there is no vision, divine revelation, understanding, and knowledge of God's word, the people will come to ruin. Why? Because the devil has blinded them. Mm -hmm. There's no vision. They can't see. They have no understanding of the word of God. They have no revelation. Uh, the devil's blinded them, and now they're going to come to ruin. Yeah. And the, re the reason is they don't know in their heart what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. And so then out of their belief system, out of their mouth comes death, uh, killing, stealing, destroying. Right. Because people are, it's of the abundance of your heart that your mouth speaks. And so if we don't have our heart belief system shored up, mm -hmm. What we believe is going to come out of our mouth one way or another. So whether we believe what the Word of God says or we believe mm -hmm. what the circumstances say, mm -hmm. either way, it's coming out of our mouth. Oh. Either way, it's coming out of our mouth. Dave wanted to give you guys a thumbs up. <laughs> well, um, so uh, we have about a page and a half. We're going to try and finish this uh, so we can get to the new stuff next week. We have to know that God is interested not just with our present day life, but with our future. If you stay in the word of God without your natural man realizing it, uh, God will prepare you for the future. Your mind won't always know or perceive what God is doing. Why? Because God's not leading you there. He's not, he's not leading you through your mind or your natural reasoning. He's leading you through your spirit. Uh, let's read that scripture. Proverbs 6.23 says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light, and reproofs, rebuke, correction, of instruction are the way of life. So notice how the scriptures are portraying the word of God as a lamp and a light. The word of God gives the believer divine insight through illumination. In essence, it gives them vision to see not only what is happening in their present day life, but it also illuminates their path, revealing the direction they should go or their future steps. So I love, I, I actually really appreciated this. Um, it, uh, so we're talking about the revelation knowledge, the, the how the word of God I'll read it again. Gives the believer divine insight through illumination. In essence, it gives them the vision to see not only what is happening now, the present day, not only what you need currently, like God was directing you just the other day, is helping you right now, but it also will guide and direct your future steps. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing here. This is done through the day-to-day -day adjustments or corrections that the believer must make on a regular basis in order to adhere to the plan of God for their lives. Look at that. You made one correction, and now look at the path it set you back on. Mm -hmm. Had you not made that correction, you would have had to keep going back, going right. back and back and back, and doing that again, again, again. Yeah. Just pass the test. <laughs> this it's it's so crucial. These adjustments, these day to day right. corrections, are are gonna set your path. They're yeah. gonna either either you make the correction and it sets you on the path towards God, or you don't, and you just keep veering off, getting further and further off. Right. Uh, it doesn't take much for the believer to get off course. One desire, one thought, something said can cause the believer to go off course. It is through the knowledge and revelation of the word that the Christian is able to make these corrections simply because the experience of receiving revelation cannot be denied. The purpose of the revelation of the word of God is also to make the word of God applicable. You can apply it when you have that revelation of the word of God in you. You can then apply the word of God mm -hmm. to your life. You know, uh, I'm brief example real quick. Uh, our, we, we, Pastor Walter, years, 15, 16, 17 years ago, he did a teaching on um, the seed. Uh, the, uh, we work for a seed, not for a living. Uh, Dave grasped that revelation first, um, and, uh, and, and him applying that revelation he got in here has set his life completely on course for the plan of God for his life. He, if he had not gotten that revelation, his life would not have gone towards the direction mm -hmm. it went right now. So if the word of God is absent, the outcome can be devastating and result in darkness. Because one thing is for sure, there is no shortage of desires, thoughts, and things 
said that are being channeled to the believer through the world system, those temptations, those lures, those things that the devil is going to try to do to get you off course, this will cause the believer to get off course and begin to follow a plan of their own, motivated by their own wants, desires, and fears because they lose sight of the outcome of God's plan for their lives. We need to make constant corrections in our lives that are brought about through the inward realization of the Word of God. The reason is for this is the concept of inward realization can also be seen as the illumination that comes with the inward understanding that we are missing the mark or have gotten off our God-given path. The inward illumination comes with a certain degree of conviction that serves as a warning light, so to speak. It is all inward, the inward activity of the Spirit of God relating important information to our spirit. And this is where we're going to drop off because we're uh, going to get into some new uh, insights that Pastor Walter has added to this book next week. Did you want to add anything? Yeah, just to wrap up. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, it's important to remember that God's plan for our life is so much better mm-hmm. than what we could ever mm-hmm. put together, put down on paper. Like he, he, he desires to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. Mm-hmm. And so... When it comes to his plan and doing it his way, we win. We get the victory. We we get the blessing. We get everything that God has desired for us to live in and to walk in. It all comes about just by simply doing his plan. And so remind your flesh when your flesh and and, uh, the carnal man wants to rise up and wants to try to do things its own way, remind your flesh, flesh. You're not gonna. You're not gonna win here. You're not gonna come out with a better plan and a better result than what we can do by following the Spirit of God, right. by following the Word, by by doing the Word. And uh, we're we're created to live a Spirit-led life. We're created to live from a uh, 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 seated in heavenly places, like from a different position, from a different reality. And so, when tests and trials and the things that that try to rise up. Uh, and try to slow you down and try to discourage you and try to sway you from not following the plan of God, when those things rise up, just remind them, hey, God's plan for me is far better and I will gain a surpassing victory in this by doing it God's way and by following the Spirit of God. So I hope this was encouragement to you guys. Yeah, definitely. Uh, We love you guys. Thank you for joining us, being with us. We'll see you guys on Sunday morning. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.